Hi everyone, so welcome back to Mrs M's Baking Show. As promised, tonight we're going to be doing biscuits for Halloween. So I'm going to start off with just a basic biscuit recipe, because I'm going to get the kids involved with decorating this. I'll upload another video of how it's all finished off later. And then the next video is going to be a gingerbread biscuit, which I'm going to ice for you. They're blood splattered, so you'll get to see how to make the icing and how to make it stay on the biscuit and everything. Okay, so as normal, wash your hands, warm soapy water, and now I'm going to show you the ingredients. So guys, we have got 275 grams of plain flour, which I've already sifted into the bowl. We have 100 grams of unsalted butter, uh, left out at room temperature so it's a bit softer and easier to beat. We then have 100 grams of caster sugar, one egg, and it will be one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okie dokie, let's get started. Right. So first things first, we need the butter, which is there, and we need the caster sugar. So they all go into a bowl, like so, making sure we haven't missed any. There we go. And then we're going to beat those together, lovingly, obviously. Now, obviously, if you wish, you can use a mixer for this. It's totally up to you. I find it easier just to do it with a wooden spoon. Good old-fashioned way, like my grandma used to do it. Now, as you can hear in the background, my oven's whirring again. And that needs to be set and preheated at 190 degrees centigrade. And obviously we've got our baking tray ready also, lined with our parchment paper. So that saves time on having to do that a little later. Obviously, as you can see, my butter was not quite soft enough at room temperature. I've done with leaving it out a little bit longer, but that's a note for yourselves. Make sure it's been out long enough and it will be easier to beat together. Another word for beat it together is also cream it, just in case you hear that in a recipe or anywhere as well. So we're just creaming together the butter and the sugar like so, till it comes together. together now. Right, now what we need to do is get ourselves a cup and a fork and we need to crack our egg into there like so and then we're going to add in our vanilla extract a little at a time beating as we go. So we need one teaspoon of that so I'm going to get my magic spoons out so that I know exactly how much I'm doing. There we go. So that's one teaspoon. So we'll start beating this and just adding a little bit of the vanilla as we're doing so, a little bit at a time. it in like so right we can get rid of those ones now and also the vanilla because we're finished with that right we're now going to start adding that to our sugar and butter mixture 
stirring it in and again you want to do this a little bit at a time you don't want to do it all at once now don't worry if it looks like it's started to separate because as you beat it and you mix it together it will all start to come back together okay so again Add in a bit at a time until it's all gone, making sure you scrape it all out of your cup. Yep, keep mixing it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to sieve our flour into the mixture. So you want to make sure you've got your sieve all ready and ready to go too. And we're going to sieve the flour into the mixture. Again, I'd advise probably a little bit at a time. It's not going to hurt. a little bit and then give it a mix making sure you scrape around the sides of the bowl as well so there's no flour left around the sides that's why I tend to do it with a wooden spoon when I'm creaming because I find that sometimes a mixer tends to leave a lot around the outside so then you have to go back in with a wooden spoon anyway so you might as well just use a wooden spoon to start with. So round and round we go. Ooh, some over there. Now, if you're finding that tapping it isn't working and it's not going through as well as you need it to, I find also grinding it down with a spoon sometimes works too. I'll get it through just as quick. Maybe put a little bit too much in my sieve, I might leave some of it out. Oh, cool, enough making a mess with this one. You will start to notice about me that about me sorry I try and be as tidy as I can but it doesn't always work right let's mix that in now you'll start to find that this is getting tougher and tougher to mix which is what we want because we're wanting it to start forming into a dough And as you can see, look, it's starting to make more of a dough-like consistency now. And just keep going until it's all mixed in. Now, for the purpose of not making the video too long, and as it's already been sifted once, I'm going to shove the flour in quick. So as not to bore you. Because heavens above, we don't want to lose any of you, do we? 
Right, so at this point, you might find that actually... Take off the wedding rings, people. Getting your fingers in might also help to mix it. So that's what I'm going to do. Get my fingers in there with it. Because you'll find, like I said, it's starting to all come together now. And that's what we're wanting it to form a dough. I'm going to chuck all my flour in, like so. Mix it up start bringing it together as a dough now don't be afraid to get your fingers in and again if you're doing this with the children they love this bit this is their most favourite bit, getting dirty and getting their fingers in. If you find that yeah, you've got a lot of mixture left in the bottom that does not seem to want to add to it, your best bet is to just get yourself a little bit of water, tiniest little bit, and add a little bit of water in. Just a tiny bit in the bottom will help it to stick together and get all those excess bits added together. Like so. And there we go. Right now what we want to do, once it's come together, reasonably well we're going to roll it out so just place it to one side and let's give look ugh, sticky fingers give our side just a little bit of a clean down I do try and be clean as much as possible I'm just going to give my hands a quick wash just to get rid of some of this excess that's on my hands because that's going to make it easier when we're rolling it out right so we get our rolling pin you may want to get yourself just a little bit of flour as well just to dust the surface down so that nothing sticks Do that briefly look slightly flour the surface and again as mentioned in my other videos do the same with your rolling pin let's get rid of these my husband absolutely loves me because he comes home bless him and he's got a mountain full of washing up to do right so i want to try and roll it out now this is totally up to you how thick or thin you want to roll it out. I don't want them too thin, but then I don't want them too thick either. So, but again, totally up to you. Like a slightly thicker biscuit, you might just find that you have to cook it 
for a little bit longer. Right, so we're getting a cutter. We're just going to use a round one, just simply, so the kids can just play in the spaces. Right, and you literally press them out like so. Obviously, getting as many on your dough as you can. Again, if you want to do shaped biscuits, if you've got some special cutters such as bats or pumpkins if we're doing Halloween then please feel free to use those but at present I didn't have any so and the kids did also mention they just wanted to do faces so I'm quite happy to carry on like that so carry on cutting as many out as you can on this piece of pastry or should we say dough I guess pastry is it Right, okay, and then what we'll do, we'll get our baking tray back in. And we will place our biscuits on our baking tray. Remember to leave a little gap between them, just in case they do expand a little. Right, now these ones you want to get into your oven. And these will probably take about 8 to 10 minutes. You want them to be a pale golden with this one. You don't really want them to be too dark. Right, so there we go. There's our biscuits all ready to go. I'm going to stick that one in. I'm going to put my timer on in the microwave for 8 minutes. Dough. Right, now with this extra dough, do the same thing again. Roll it out and cut some more. Get them in when the others are finished. So again, if you need some, get your flour and just roll it out over your rolling pin in your surface. And again, carry on until all your dough has been used. Right, I'm going to leave you there and we will check back in after our eight minutes is up and check how our biscuits are looking. Hope to see you in a shortly. So everyone, our eight minutes is up and these are our finished products out of the oven. Now as you can see, some of them have caught a little bit, they're a little bit darker on the edges. This one, for some reason, has gone a bit bent up, but that's okay. The kids are going to decorate them, they're going to love doing it, they're going to have fun, and let's be honest, we're not really on Bake Off, are we? So we don't need them all uniform, and if they're going to be Halloween monsters anyway, there's no bother. Right, so, I hope it all went okay for you guys and you really enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and leave any comments that you so wish, and I will upload a short video and show you what they look like once my kids... I've given them all a really good decorating. Thanks for watching.